Hey, good morning. Welcome to the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy. I'm Jackie Swindler. I'm the director here. It's a great privilege we have for y'all to be here today, and what an honor to have uh, Governor McMaster and the Lieutenant Governor and then all these wonderful chiefs and sheriffs here. It is, a, it is a great day here in law enforcement. I just want to tell you a little bit about what the day is. This is a ceremonial signing of a, what I believe a wonderful piece of legislation that can really help professionalize and move the needle on law enforcement here in South Carolina. House Bill 3050 was thought about a couple of years ago, and there's been a lot of work, a lot of testimony. A lot of individuals have worked on this. This has been one of the more collaborative efforts that I have seen between law enforcement, through all the ranks of law enforcement and all the associations, and the legislature. And after much conversation and talk, this bill was signed, and it went into effect uh, July the 1st. And I'm going to just briefly talk about some of the components of the bill. And the first thing is that uh, historically in South Carolina, you could be hired uh, in a law enforcement agency and you had a year to work before you had to be certified so you could actually police without being certified. And after some conversation, and that will be discussed in a little bit, it was decided and a good idea to have law enforcement officers certified first. So that is the first thing that went into effect July the 1st. You can work without being certified until you go to the academy, but you have to be in, in direct uh, contact with a certified class one officer. So that is a big, a big improvement, I believe, for the state of South Carolina. And then the bill goes on to do some other things. I'll tell you, I've traveled the country uh, and meet other directors uh, of academies and post directors, and when they hear how robust our misconduct statute is in South Carolina, they're very envious. We are way ahead of most of this country on what we do in making our profession uh, professional and doing the right thing. We added uh, to the misconduct statute because of incidents around the country, the duty to intervene when you see a physical uh, action against a citizen that you believe is egregious, that's not right. The officer must attempt to intervene and stop that act from happening if they can. But of course, if two officers are dealing with multiple assailants or, or uh, people they're trying to arrest, you may not physically be able to go intervene, but you could say, stop, stop doing that. And if that doesn't work, you have to continue doing what you're doing but you attempted to intervene with that physically, but you must report that to your superiors within 24 hours. So there's a duty to intervene and a duty to report. And I believe that is just a great standard that we've added with that. Another thing that's, that's in this bill is that the legislature agreed that there needed to be some minimum standards and policies for all agencies in South Carolina. So we have nine policies uh, and practices that will be put into place will actually go into effect January the 1st of, of 2023. We've met with uh, representatives from all aspects of law enforcement and people have worked hard on developing what these standards are. So if the training council votes for these standards next Monday, we will push those nine standards out and then a lot of different model policies and then each agency in South Carolina can adapt those policies. If you're already CALEA accredited, which is national accredited, or state accredited, uh, you already have those policies. So what we're attempting to do is to help all the other agencies who do not have these policies to come in, into uh, compliance with that. Part of the bill says that the academy will set up a, a compliance division. <clears throat> we will hire some individuals, uh, preferably people who have been previous assessors and certainly understand policies and practices and law enforcement. We will send them out to inspect uh, every agency that is not currently accredited. You'll have to go see each agency at least once during a three-year period. We will ensure that they not only implement the policy and practices based on these standards, but that also they can show proofs of compliance. And we, of course, will provide training uh, for this so that agencies will be able to do this. And sort of last about this is that when these uh, inspectors go out, if they happen to find them in compliance, we would write them a letter saying they're in compliance. If we would find that they're not, we would write them telling them areas that they're deficient and we would give them 30 days to come into compliance. If an agency would refuse to come into compliance and do the right things, then there is teeth in this legislation that we can do one of several things. One, we can impose $1,000 a day fine for being out of compliance. We could seek an injunction in the court uh, of common pleas in that county and get an injunction to have them cease. Or we could, through the training council, temporarily hold in abeyance the certification of every officer within that agency until they came in compliance. 
Uh, hopefully we'll never have to do any of those latter, but the teeth are in there for that to hopefully bring all the agencies in the state to doing the right thing. And, and that is why we're so excited about this bill. You see professionals from all over the state that I know and trust are wanting to do the right thing. They are doing the right thing and they are supporting this. At this time, I'm gonna call on our friend, Representative Dennis Moss, and he will tell you how we started this bill a few years ago. So without further ado, Dennis Moss. Thank you, thank you, Jackie. Uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Chief Kill, Sheriff Tolson, um, all of y'all that are standing around um, that support law enforcement and are the, the footprint of law enforcement every day. Um, it's an honor to be here. And, and this, this is something that a lot of us in law enforcement was a thing that was time coming. Um, and, and to give you a small background, years ago there was a nine months, year backlog to get into academy. If the chief of police, sheriff, sled, whoever hired somebody, there was a backlog to get into academy to get them trained. So they were given some in service or so, but they were told to go to work and work closely with somebody if possible. But as you know, sometimes you're not always with somebody. And I got a lot of support in the legislature, and we got some former troopers here. But I want to name uh, Representative William Bailey. He's the retired police chief of North Myrtle Beach uh, Police Department. And along with the director, Jackie Swindler, during our budget hearings this two years ago, and there was an incident that happened in the state, very unfortunate, but the young man that paid the ultimate sacrifice was supposed to come to the academy in about two weeks. And in the early morning hours, between five and six o'clock, he was attempting to make a traffic stop. And as you know, the ones that have walked this line, there's no routine stop. There's no routine encounter that you would have if you're knocking on a door, if a sheriff sends somebody out to do a, a, a check on somebody or to serve a warrant. There's no routine encounter. You don't never know what you're gonna do. And all the training that they can do might not ever get you uh, trained for that, what might happen. But the academy, who is second to none in the nation, will give you the tools to make the right decision. And so to make an arrest, you know, the law gives you uh, the force necessary to, to make the arrest and no more. And so I, I want to applaud all the law enforcement standing here, the ones that aren't here, the legislators, the senators that passed the Senate overwhelmingly, passed the House overwhelmingly. But this came about as a budget hearing with the Academy and after this unfortunate incident in January the 5th, 2020. And I asked Director Swindler, I said, Jackie, has the time come that we must make everybody certified before they police on their own? He said, yes, it's come. So I want to thank you for your leadership. With his leadership, there's no longer a wait of getting into the academy. If you hire somebody, it's within weeks, not months or a year. So I want to thank everybody. And the public expects that when they have an encounter with a law enforcement officer, that they're trained and they know what they're doing. And it's our duty um, as officials to give law enforcement the skills to be successful. We put them out there in harm's way and there's a lot going on and there's a lot going on in the world today. But this bill is just gonna make it better for the officer to be successful and the public to understand that they have someone that knows what they're doing and is trained and certified. So on that point, Chief Kill with SLED. Good morning. The first, uh, Governor, I want to thank you and the Lieutenant Governor, members of the General Assembly, uh, for working with law enforcement stakeholders in support for our profession. As I said earlier this morning uh, to the Governor, there's many states that uh, are envious of South Carolina when it comes to law enforcement and the support that we have from our leadership here in our state. 
and not every state enjoys that, uh, that support. I'm proud of the law enforcement profession, and as I say all the time, I still believe that this profession is an honorable profession. Over the course of my 45-year career, I've seen many changes, but none of the moves that I've seen are as important or more transformative than this particular legislation. Law enforcement leaders came together to draft legislation to improve this profession. There was a consensus that as has been said, no longer acceptable for any agency in South Carolina to merely exist without any guidelines. They also determined that it was no longer acceptable for, to allow an uncertified police officer to work on their own without coming to the academy and being trained and certified as a police officer. Requiring law enforcement agencies to have minimum standards in nine high risk, high liability areas again is transformative step forward. Additionally, the legislation gives inspection authority as Director Swindler has said to the South Carolina Criminal Justice Academy who will create a compliance unit that one, will ensure that agencies have these policies in effect and two, that they're abiding by these policies. The goals of this bill, of House Bill 3050, were to increase accountability and professionalism and community trust while protecting officers on the street that are facing challenges and dangers like never before. Continuing to build community relations and trust is vital to the success of our profession. And Governor, again, I want to thank you for your support, not only for this legislation, but the support that you give this profession on a daily basis. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Kevin Tolson. I'm the sheriff in York County, immediate past president of the association. And I stand up here proudly with my colleagues uh, across the state, chiefs and sheriffs, police officers, um, to let the public know and reaffirm the trust that they have in us that number one, we need to be accountable, number two, we want to be accountable, and number three, we are accountable. We're accountable to the public. And this legislation codifies that accountability. And I'm proud also to say that most of what is in this legislation, in practice, most of our agencies across the state are practicing these nine requirements. And so now it just requires us to, to have them written down and, and make sure that our employees in our agencies follow these nine mandates. And so it's a good day for law enforcement. I appreciate the governor making sure that we had a seat at the table in crafting this legislation. Uh, I certainly appreciate the governor's support in his long career um, as U.S. Attorney, as Attorney General, as Lieutenant Governor, and now as Governor. I appreciate his support that he has shown throughout the years of his career for law enforcement. He's a governor who gets it. He's been in the trenches with us uh, throughout his entire career, supporting us and understanding how tough uh, our job is. And he's just been a tremendous uh, supporter and friend in law enforcement. And with that, I will turn the podium over to Governor McMaster. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thanks, Sheriff. Well, everything that those men have said is exactly right. I have just a few things to add. Um, there are people coming from all over the United States to South Carolina for a lot of different reasons, and one of them, or one among those are, as Chief Keel mentioned, are law enforcement officers, because we don't defund the police here. We actually, we've raised the pay for Class A officers. We've also eliminated the income tax on veterans' retirement pay. We'd like to raise the pay on all officers because they need it, we, they deserve it. It makes us stronger. We'd also like to extend those exemption benefits to law enforcement as well. And we'll keep doing it because I believe we have the best law enforcement in the country. I think if you look at, at the, the men and women you see in law enforcement in South Carolina, I think we all have great confidence, unlike some other states. So we, we, are, we are different. Our history is different. We've come from different places, gone through different things. In South Carolina is, is shining today for a lot of reasons, and one of them is because of law enforcement. But as we go along in the years, as we experience different things, 
we have different technologies that come up. It's time to add, it's time to modify, it, it's planned to, it's time to, to modernize, to do new, new things, particularly with new technologies, and all that requires training. And that's why this, this place and the training that our officers receive is so vital and so important. And again, it makes us stronger. And some folks might think that, well, that's a, a new idea. Uh, but actually, the importance of law enforcement goes way back to the beginning of this country. And I'll just, if I could remind you of a few things, is in a document known as the Declaration of Independence from 1776, it says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. Well, this is the government. This is a part of the government that you're looking at in, in flesh and blood. And what are they to do? They are to secure life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for the people. So they are founded in the Constitution of the United States and the Declaration of Independence. The Constitution lists a variety of rights, which, by the way, are not created by the Constitution. They're created by God and us. And the Constitution was devised, was written, to as we created that national government, the 13 colonies, 13 states, to create a government to do certain things, but to limit its power on infringing on those rights of the people. So where does law enforcement fit in? Well, Amendment 1. First Amendment uh, guarantee keeps the government from infringing on the uh, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, to petition the government for redress of grievances. Amendment two, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Amendment four, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, homes, papers, and effects against unreasonable seizures, searches and seizures shall not be violated. Amendment number five, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on the presentation indictment of a grand jury. No person shall be twice put in jeopardy of life limb or compelled in a criminal case to be a witness against himself, nor deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for use without just compensation. Amendment six, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right of a speedy and public trial, impartial jury, to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusations against him, to be confronted with witnesses, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in favor of the assistance of counsel. Number seven, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. No fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined and so forth. Excessive bail in number eight shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel or unusual punishments inflicted. My point is, these law officers and what they do are involved in everything involved in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. It doesn't get any more important than that. And that's why it is so important in our state where we revere those documents, we revere our citizens, we revere our rights, we revere our history, and we look forward greatly to our future. It is so important that we have good law enforcement, law and order, not only just to bring those who have transgressed to justice, but also to guide those who would do injustice in the right direction, to deter crime, to keep order, as well as to help punish crime as delineated in these documents. So if we can make our law enforcement better in South Carolina in order to protect our people, our young people, our old people, our businesses, our futures, our properties, then we will do everything we can to do that. And this today is another step in that great progress for the future of South Carolina. Are there any questions? Going once. <laughs> Anything else, Jay? We'll now sign.